Almost nobody understands the real source of world problems. Learn about the evil spirit force that stirs human minds to hate and hurt others. Next, on The Key of David with Gerald Flurry. Greetings, everyone. Lucifer was actually the beginning of evil in this world. And uh, if we, we need to go back to that origin, if we don't get the origin of events, then we don't get a, a deep understanding of them. So we have to go back and consider that. Uh, if you fail to see the beginning of a movie, you are confused about what's going on in that movie, so we want to uh, apply that same principle to the Lucifer beginning. And something that re was really pivotal in this world and changed everything, you could say, as far as God's master plan is concerned. Lucifer and one third of the angels were sent to this earth to rule over it, and they had the potential to rule the whole universe, but they failed, and they didn't have the character to administer God's government on this earth, and so God realized that He couldn't trust the angels to rule over the earth and the universe. That's when God decided that He had to recreate Himself in man, because only God, only God could be capable and able to rule the universe. And God, uh, of course, had been doing it for, uh, or ruling everything there was from the very uh, well, throughout eternity. I want to read to you a verse, Jude 6, where it talks about this uh, problem with Lucifer. And it says, And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. So Lucifer led them astray, and they left their first estate, this wonderful potential they lost. Jude goes on in verse 13 and says they're, they're wandering stars. They're just wandering around out there. They are out of orbit, like a planet, out of orbit, because they rejected the government of God and would not administer it. And that was a real problem because everything then fails if you don't implement God's government. So here, if you look at God's very elect today, they have to stay within that government orbit, or that law orbit, or they too become wandering members in God's church, or wandering stars, as it were, because they are not in the orbit, they're not in the framework that God has given us to have joy and peace and happiness and learn how to administer God's government throughout the universe. So that is an important lesson that we need to be thinking about. If you look at uh, Satan and, and the demons that followed him, one-third of them, of the angels, they know about this future. They know they're headed for the black abyss, and they're full of hatred and full of rage because of that, and they are the most miserable beings in the whole universe. If you see these uh, and understand these fallen angels that uh, had this, all this potential, you realize what God has given man today, given the opportunity today to let God recreate Himself in man so we can rule the earth and the whole universe under God. He can entrust us to rule under Him and not destroy the earth the way Lucifer did. But we have to understand this origin or we get mixed up in that and get into real trouble. If you look at the throne of God, talked about in Ezekiel 28 and verse 14, you have two cherubs with their wings over God's throne. 
Lucifer was one of those cherubs, and they were sitting right there at God's throne, being taught by God and watching how God ruled the universe, how He ruled everything, and they, they knew how to do it. They knew how to, to uh, rule exactly the way God did. Now that's uh, something that we all have to learn. After they were created, God went out and created the whole universe and told them certainly uh, they had a great potential. And they knew that was all for them to rule. And so they rejoiced and they were full of joy. And uh, you can read that in Job 38, verses 4 through 7. They were really thrilled with the purpose that God was giving them. But then, of course, we know this broke down before, well, I'd say I shouldn't say before too long because we don't know how long it took for all this to happen. It could have been millions of years. We just don't know because the Bible doesn't say. But at any rate, we know this that uh, they were turning away from God, they were sinning. There had been no sin in the universe until, until uh, Lucifer sinned and it rejected the very government of God, and then he became uh, more uh, evil and actually organized all those demons and, and rose up with an army to fight God, to try to take over the very throne of God, which was His own Creator. But he, I mean, really, you have to realize what an amazing thing this is, that uh, Lucifer has a uh, superior mind to men, and so do those uh, demons. They had all this, these amazing in-depth thinkers, and they turned away from the government of God and became totally evil, totally like the opposite of God, really. There was no truth in them. God is truth. He is the truth. His Word is the truth. And yet, they got away from all of that, and as a result of their rebelling against God and trying to overthrow Him, He cast them back to this earth, and uh, the earth became without form and void, the Hebrew reads in Genesis 1 and verse 2. He totally wrecked the earth. And then God had to come along and recreate it, really. That's what Genesis 1 is all about, recreating the earth from that destruction of uh, Lucifer, who became Satan the devil, the adversary of God. So if you look at the, the Hebrew, the Lucifer means light bringer. God was sending light to this earth and to the universe. He wanted them, the angels, to help Him rule the entire universe until He saw that it, they couldn't do it. They couldn't be trusted to do that. Now, there were two-thirds of the angels that stayed with God, but still God knew that He had to come up with a, another plan, a plan B, recreating Himself, and that's what He's doing through men. That ought to just absolutely make us faint if we truly understand what God is telling us. He had to recreate Himself in man. I mean, this is so much greater than creating the angels. Never, ever did you, do you hear God call the angels sons of God. They're not going to be born into the family of God and be God beings. They're not going to ever do that or have that opportunity. If you uh, look at Isaiah 14 and verse 13, I'll just paraphrase this, but. Uh, he said, I will exalt my throne above the stars or the angels of God. And he also said, I will be like the Most High. I'll be like the Most High. In other words, I'm going to kick God off His throne. That was his plan. Of course, God had no trouble casting him back to this earth. And Christ said he, he saw Satan fall to this earth like a flash of lightning. But here, we had uh, 
a being that was stationed right there at the very throne of God. You talk about being educated. He was really educated, and God was impressed by His education, sent Him to this earth, but then He did this. And he's now, His character is now set, and that for the, of those demons, because uh, spiritual beings are here forever, and they have set their character for all time. And that's how tragic this is. Satan means the adversary. And uh, as you know, there's going to be another, uh, there was prophesied to be another rebellion or a rising up against God. And we'll, uh, we're, we're, we've already uh, seen that happen on this earth, and we, we'll uh, send you material to make you understand that at the end of this program, if you don't already understand it. Here's a quote I'd like to read to you from our correspondence course, Lesson 18, and we'll send you a copy of this at the end of the program as well. But notice, uh, there had to be a, a successor qualify to replace Satan the devil. And here's what uh, the correspondence course reads, The very fact that Satan was in the Garden of Eden to tempt the first humans, that he is even now the God of this world, 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 4, and the prince of the power of the air, he has great power and who had all the kingdoms of the world to give Christ, Matthew 4, verses 8 and 9, when there's, there, there was this uh, gigantic battle going on between uh, Satan and uh, Jesus Christ, where Christ was qualifying to replace Satan on this world's throne. He has to, of course, he had to be, go, go back to heaven, where the, uh, in the heaven, northern heaven, where the Father was, to be inducted into that office, and that takes some time. So now we're at the period of history where He is about to return to this earth, and there are many prophecies that will prove that to you. So somebody had to qualify to replace Satan and show that he would totally support God and be loyal to His Father. And he said, My father is greater than I. He, would, he knew that he, he had to support the government of his father. And that's what we're here to learn. He wants to call some people out ahead of time, the first fruits, and show them how to rule on David's throne with him. But you have to qualify, we have to qualify to do that uh, as Christ did by overcoming Satan. So we have to all have to qualify, do certain things to qualify. That doesn't mean it makes us worthy of the, that reward, but it is just a wonderful uh, opportunity that God gives His bride or His uh, very elect. The first Adam failed, the second Adam, Jesus Christ, succeeded uh, magnificently. So. Uh, the, the big, really, the big lesson here that we need to learn is that uh, it, it's just a, a principle of God's government that the, the state can never be without a head. You can look at Colossians 2, verses 18 and 19, where it says that God's people in this end time lost their head. They turned away from the head like Satan did, or a Lucifer, who became Satan. Adam failed God, and uh, that's because, well, Eve was deceived, Adam wasn't deceived, he just went along because he, he didn't have enough leadership to really uh, play his role. Here's what we wrote in the correspondence course. On the first Sabbath day, the God who created the first humans and who later became Jesus Christ instructed Adam and Eve in God's way. Of course He did. The way of the government of God based on the law of God, just as Lucifer and his angels had been instructed in the ways of God's government after their creation. So God uh, always made sure that they received the instruction of God, whether it was Adam and Eve or Lucifer. They, they all were instructed how to administer God's government. God makes sure of that. That's what, see, what He wants us to do if we're going to fulfill our potential. And now we have that opportunity 
and uh, with uh, certainly considerably more stature than uh, the angels will ever have. Notice Jeremiah 17 and verse 9, The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. It also says in Romans 8 and verse 7, The carnal mind is enmity or hostility toward God. Deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Now, I would just like to ask you, <laughs> where, where, uh, where did that come from? Where did, this, is, this is human nature. The human heart, God says, is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Did God create human nature? No, He didn't. He hates that thinking. He would never create that. That thinking was created by the rebellion of Lucifer. It is turning away from God. And God just let this play itself out, and He became the God of this world. Human nature is the thinking of the devil, or the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. There are, there, there's some good knowledge, but it is still the way of death, the, the, Satan's way of thinking. Just say, well, okay, we, uh, men, are, men said, like Adam, well, I want to have my own religion and my own government, my own science. I want to do it my way. I don't want to do it the way God wants it done. Now, that's, that source of that is Satan the devil. And nobody in this world, well, almost nobody understands that. It is amazing, but uh, we, that, that we need to understand and, and understand why this, is, this world is filled with vanity and selfishness and wanting to get and war and do all these things. Why do men act that way? Because they're led by Satan the devil. Jeremiah 17 and verse 9, that's in your own Bible. New Testament, Old Testament, many scriptures tell you that. They essentially say that very same thing. Now, if you have uh, God's Spirit, you see, uh, you, could, you can uh, discern uh, spiritual knowledge. But did you know the human mind, just as it is, cannot discern spiritual knowledge? They can't discern it. God has to give us that spiritual knowledge, that Holy Spirit, so we can discern what's right and what's wrong. Man does not know what's right and what's wrong. Look around this world. Look at what you see happening in this world. It's just amazing the, uh, the evil you see, and man cannot discern, you see, what is right and what's wrong. And look at all the problems that we have today in this world terrifying problems, and we need God's government. There is a cause for all of the troubles we see in this world, misery, destruction, pain, and plagues like coronavirus. Why is it this world has to have problems like that? God told Israel, if, if you will obey Me and listen to what I say to you, you won't have these diseases that you see in the world. You won't have those. If you'll do what I say, even though they didn't have God's Holy Spirit, He said he, he would protect them from that. And He does the same thing for His people today. Look at the coronavirus. I mean, we're, millions of people are being affected by that. Sixty million are, are now in quarantine, I guess, even in uh, Italy. I believe that's the right statistic. It's just a, a terrible plague in, in Iran. And uh, why is that? Well, why is that happening? Well, it's because we're, uh, we have rejected God's government, and we won't let God teach us. He wants to teach us how to live and how to rule this earth and then the whole universe. He's offering that to anybody today who will answer His call and help get His work done. He's, not, he's just calling a little flock. You, that's what the New Testament says. The Hebrew Bible tells us that Abel, Enoch, and Noah uh, were the only three righteous men for the first 1900 years. And then, of course, 
Abraham and uh, Isaac and uh, Isaiah and Joseph came after the flood. But uh, if you look, let me just give you some scriptures quickly. The angels are powerful. Second uh, Peter two in verse eleven, and they they protect men from accidents, calamities, plagues like coronavirus. That's this is what in your own Bible. And other evils, Psalm 34, verse 7, read that. Psalm 91, verses 1 through 12. And, uh, and will God's angels also fight our enemies for us? Psalm 35, verses 1 through 6 says, Yes, He will. Yes, He will. Now, that, that's something we need to be aware of. God has angelic armies out there. Read the example in 2 Kings 6, verses 15 through 17. One of the servants with Elisha was afraid of an army that was coming at them. And Elisha said, Don't fear. And then he showed him the great, powerful spirit army that God had sent to fight the battle for them. That's the kind of protection that God will give us if we will submit to His government. And He'll take care of plagues like the coronavirus. Look, there, there are many, many scriptures that tell us that. And we certainly do need to understand it, and especially in this end time. Another quote, had Satan won this titanic spiritual battle with Jesus Christ, he would have retained world rule. If Christ won, he would depose Satan and become world ruler at his second coming, which is at the door, Matthew 24 says. That coming is at the door, and we ought to be able to see it at, when it's at the door. That's what God is telling us. You ought to know that. And if we're heeding God's Word, we will. That's, that's just a, a, a mind-boggling reward that God gives to His people. And how little people know about God. They don't believe God in this, His Word, which is this, this Bible, is Jesus Christ in print. They don't believe Him. They, they believe in Christ, but they don't believe His message, what He says, and do what He says. And therefore, we have all these problems. All these problems. Look how He stood up to Satan, and He, he knew God's will. And he let Satan know that. I mean, he really knew God's will. He quoted Scripture. He knew all the Bible. He, he, he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and he had perfect answers for everything Satan uh, challenged him with. Now, that's uh, uh, the way he qualified to, to rule and give us a, a beautiful, wonderful government that's going to bring peace and prosperity to this, to this world like you've never even imagined. It's going to be a utopia, only better. It's going to be that outstanding. God says you need that sword of the Spirit. That's the only offensive weapon He gave us. Okay, go on, go on the offense with that spirit of, of, of the sword. Take this Word of God and go on the offense and teach this message to the world and give them hope if they will just listen and heed the message that God has for them. It's not my message. Don't look to men. You're under a curse if you follow men, but you are under a curse if you don't follow God. And if they follow some man or men follow Christ, then you should follow them, as Paul said in 1 Corinthians 11, verses 1 and 2. But again, you see, Satan tried to dethrone God, and he's, he's, he's done it again in this end time. He wants to dethrone God, kick Him off the throne, but God has called us to be here. And as He says in Revelation 3 and verse 21, that we are here to overcome Satan as Christ overcame. We have to overcome the same way Christ did, because we're going to share Christ's throne. It'll be on David's throne. It's called that, but it's actually the eternal throne. And He's offering us the opportunity to share that with Him, if we will be His first fruits and get this message out to this world, this wonderful, exciting, thrilling message that is going to bring everything good to this earth very, very soon.
Until next week, this is Gerald Flurry. Goodbye, friends. Request Human Nature, What Is It? for the truth about your marvelous human spirit. Also request Mystery of the Ages, a Bible lesson about the spirit realm, and a Philadelphia Trumpet subscription. All our literature is available free of charge at no cost or obligation to you. Order now. The preceding program was a paid presentation of The Key of David, brought to you by the Philadelphia Church of God.